So over here we have four orifice pipes of different sizes. Um, we're going to be using either four of them or three of them or two of them to see the difference between the different sizes of the orifice pipes. Um, so now before uh, you start uh, using this, take an orifice pipe. I'm going to pick the largest one for this one. And slot this in to the center. Just like so, make sure it's tightly in. Um, and then, before switching the pump on, um, you have to make sure that the control valve is fully closed. And the way you know that is by turning it clockwise and make sure, making sure it's tight. Making sure the red marker is inside. Once it's all the way closed, switch on the pump switch and start to turn this anti clockwise. Letting the water out. Making sure that the water is coming up from the 12.5 mm uh, diameter pipe by turning this three wheel valve towards this way. Now, you're going to want to have someone to control the control valve, um, making sure that the water is at a consistent level, a constant level. If it's going too slowly, you're going to want to spin around, anti clockwise, bring it up. And if it's going too fast, you want to spin it clockwise to bring it down. Okay? So we'll just wait it out until it's about this level. But it must be higher than the pipes. That's a must. Now, once you see that the vortex shape is shaping up, um, pick this device up. It's called the profile measuring gauge. Alright? Um, and the, the point of this is to count, uh, measure the diameter of the top part of the vortex. So um, as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that someone is controlling the control valve to make sure that the water level is constant. Okay? Now you're going to want to put this in from here to the center there. Alright? And that's going to disrupt the shape, but you're going to weight it go back to the instant level which is just now around there and once that's done right, you're gonna want to turn this around okay. until it touches the end of the circle the two ends so you can kind of see that that's the diameter of the circle there all right it's touching the water there it's at the tip. Now once you're done with that, it doesn't matter if you cut it. You're gonna wanna take a ruler and measure this length and record it. You wanna do this about two or three times to find an average reading and then you're done with this. Now making sure that the water level is the same, you take the peacock dip it in the water and make sure that you dip it at a constant level. For example, right now, I'm dipping it at the 0.5 mark. It's in the water at 0.5 mark. And then you gotta take the reading of how high the water level is inside the tube. This is about one. Once you've gotten that, bring this out. Do it for three more readings, making sure that you rinse it at the same level. Just now I rinse it at five. 0.5 like that. And then you'll be done with this. Now once you're done with this, you're gonna want to first switch the pump off, letting the valve open to let all the water out. And then you bring out the orifice pipe and push out that pipe. And that is it for the free vortex experiment. Okay, so moving on with the next part of the experiment, which is the force vortex experiment. Uh, first, I'm going to show you the um, equipment. Uh, we have here the plug that we're going to put inside the hole. And this is the part where you're going to put the propeller in there, the pedal, I mean. Um, so yeah, these are the two things that you're going to need. And also some needles. Some needles to measure the surface profile. So again, um, first of all, just now, uh, we put the orifice pipes in first. Now we're going to put the pedal in first. Tightly in there. Um, once that's done, the same process. You gotta make sure the control valve is closed. Safety first. Remember that. Um, and turn on the pump switch. I'm gonna open the control valve. Right, now, 
you're going to want to turn the chi wave valve this way this time to make sure that it comes out of the 9 millimeters diameter pipe. Alright? Because you want it to give it a rotating motion. Alright. Um, the same as this now. You're going to want to have someone to control the control valve and making sure that the water level is constant. Around, around the same level, just like just now, around there or something. So, once you have the constant level uh, inside the cylinder, you're going to want to have to take the biggest needle among all the other needles, slot it into the center of the bridge, um, and making sure it touches the uh, water level at the top. There we go. Now, once that's done, you're going to want to take a ruler and measure from the bridge until the top of the needle. Once you have that reading, just bring this out and do it for the other holes using the smaller needles. So you're going to want to slot it in here, touch it there, and you're going to want to measure that from the bridge to the top. And you're going to want to do it for here and here and, and so on and so forth. They are all of varying distances from the center. You gotta make sure that the center is the zero mark and then you gotta count the distances between this hole and this hole and record that as well. Once you're done with that, um, you're gonna wanna leave these things here and now you're gonna wanna have a stopwatch with you on your phone or something. Um, counting the amount of revolutions that this pedal makes by just see that's one rotation, that's two rotation and so on in 60 seconds. And you're gonna to wanna to count the reps per minute or per second um, by just dividing it. So now once you have that, you're gonna to wanna to switch the pump off. Alright, and again letting the control valve open uh, to make sure all the water comes out. And you have to repeat it two or three, two or more times or one more time at different water levels, a lower water level, a higher water level, and repeat the same calculations and measurements again. That's it for the first vertex experiment. Thank you.